Hi all, welcome to Salesforce in 5 minutes. In this video, we are going to understand what exactly is a workbench and how do we log in into workbench. But before getting started, if you really like my videos, I request you to please subscribe to this channel. So workbench is nothing but a powerful web-based suit of tools designed for administrator and developer to interact with salesforce.com itself. Okay, using the force.com APIs. In simple terms, Salesforce, you can uh, uh, upload, remove, or deploy the components, or remove the components, or uh, interact with Salesforce itself using that uh, web based tool that is nothing but the workbench itself. So it's a tool basically with the help of which you can interact with Salesforce itself. Okay, next thing is how do I log in into it? Okay, so, so for an example, if I want to log into workbench, you can just go to workbench.developer.com now one of the most important thing is let's say I am logged in inside the salesforce doc okay let's say I am logged in inside the salesforce doc x okay and again after that I have logged in inside the salesforce doc y okay and then I use developer dot or whatever I logged in into workbench okay this is a very important topic if I am logging into workbench if I have logged in into first in x and then into y and if I log in into workbench, okay, it's going to take the session of Y, okay, because the latest logged in was Y. So if you're thinking that, okay, I've logged in into X and then Y, and if I am logging into workbench, I will be logged in into inside the uh, logged in inside the workbench as an X uh, as an X Salesforce org, it won't be possible. So for an example, right now I'm logged in inside the Salesforce org, okay, that is Salesforce in five minutes, okay. This is the Salesforce org, and as soon as I click on workbench or developer.com okay this page you will be able to see and as soon as i click on agree and log in with salesforce automatically it's going to take the credentials of this salesforce doc and log in into our salesforce doc via workbench okay so see if you log over over here you can see developer at the rate salesforce in five minutes i'm automatically logging i don't need to provide username i don't need to provide the password but one of the most important thing is this one if you're logged in inside the x and if you're logged in inside the y after the x if you open the workbench you will be logged in inside the y org okay why am i telling you this is let's say you are logged in inside the dev org and after that you have logged in inside the uat org and somehow you want to deploy the data or put some data or upload some data inside the x org right so what you did what you just went to workbench and you logged in but actually you're logged in inside the y org if you see you are not able to properly see in which org you're logged in unless and until you hover over here okay so this mistake can be done Okay, so that's the reason why keep these things in mind in which log in or uh, you will usually log in. Okay, now let's understand one by one what each of these things done. Okay, what each of this tab at the top will done. The first thing is whenever you log in into the workbench, just check this hover over this username and to uh, try to understand in which org you are uh, logged in actually. Okay, as I can see developer at the Salesforce in five minutes, I can understand that I am logged in into the correct org okay so always check that as soon as you log in into the workbench now let's move to the tab at the top okay first is an info tab using the info tab you can find out what are the different types of the standard objects and the custom objects that are available within your salesforce org. so if i click over here okay you can see all the objects like for an example if i want to go to the account i can get all the data about it right action overrides child relationships with this what are amount of fields that i have right record types how much i record types i have supported scopes all these things can i, I can easily find out using workbench so what the workbench is actually doing as i said previously it's trying to interact with salesforce and bring the data to us on the click of a button okay so in info you are able to standard and custom object you will be able to see all the details regarding the standards and custom object like what are the views that are available what are the child relationships how many fields that objects have and all that stuff okay same thing you can see the metadata types and the components which are available within your salesforce op. okay so again the, you can also see this thing things in your salesforce op that are available next is the session information that is not much important but it just describes about your session information nothing else okay this next is soql query now you can query the data from the workbench to your personal system okay to this my the, like the laptop that i'm in right now i can query the data from your salesforce to my personal system in the form of excel using running the sql query 
so I can click on SQL query I can select the object that I want from here okay let's say I'm selecting account object automatically as soon as I select account all the fields of account are available to me inside this field section so I can select any fields that I want so for an example I've selected two fields automatically the query is created next thing I can select the result uh, so filter by result so for example if my annual revenue is greater than or equal to thousand I want to query all those records so automatically see the query is created so you can write a SQL query and most important the rate the data that will be written will be in the form of list at the bottom okay it will just written in the form of table right now as you can see so these are a few accounts so these accounts are queried okay having greater than annual revenue greater than thousand okay these are the queries but what if I want that data in the form of matrix or in the form of bulk CSV so you can just select bulk CSV okay and you can just quickly click on query automatically a CSV of this records will be created so this is how cool it is you can just query or, or take all the records that are available in Salesforce take the backup of those records by just querying using the workbench itself the same way you can do it for asynchronous uh, SQL query you can run a SOSL and you can st streaming pushing top streaming pushing top even I don't know what it is I've never used it to be honest okay next step says the data okay if you can pull the data using from the Salesforce or using workbench you can also push the data to the sales to the our Salesforce or using this workbench so if I go to the data and insert I can actually insert the record from the from the Excel to my Salesforce org itself so I can create a proper Excel and I can select whatever object type like for an example I want to push the data to account object so I can select the object type as account and I can create my own CSV that I need and then select from file and choose the file that I want okay the Excel that I've created I can choose it I can just upload the data as, as per as the need okay so you can also upload the data as you can pull the data but also you can upload the data you can insert the data you can update upset delete undelete purge okay all these things can be done so purge is basically means permanently deletes the record from your recycle bin so delete is nothing but a soft delete so what it will do it will just delete the record but it will be available inside your uh, Salesforce org but in the case of purge it will be also removed from the recycle bin itself okay so this is the difference and this is what is the capability of the workbench next thing is migration migration means you can deploy your component from one org to the another org. This is a very cool thing. That is, you can deploy your component from one org to the another org using workbench. So let's say if your VS code is not opening, if a chain set is not working, or something like that, you can always rely on workbench because workbench is going to be always available. You can just deploy your component as far as you need from one end to another end using this workbench itself. Right, so this is what it is. Migration top migration means basically you can deploy the component from one end to another. Okay, and next is last and the final one is nothing but the utilities. With the help of the REST Explorer, this is very cool. Okay, and I have only used this part of it, REST Explorer. You can create an Apex class which will be exposed to the external system, and you can run that particular Apex class uh, inside this REST Explorer. So, for an example, if you have created a REST API, okay, at your end inside Salesforce Org, you have created a function. Okay, which is exposed to the external system and you don't know whether that function is proper properly working or not you can run that particular function whether it is uh, able to retrieve uh, able to return the specific data or not within this rest explorer itself to check your rest api is working perfectly fine or not so there are also a, a further capabilities like apex execute password management honestly i've never used it bulk api job status like for an example if there is any bulk api you can find out the job status of it by providing the job id itself so the, this, these are the different kind of the functionalities that Workbench can provide. Okay. In more few videos, what we are going to do is we are going to understand how are we going to deploy one components or multiple components from one org to another org using Workbench itself. If you found this video helpful regarding Workbench, what Workbench is, if it is clear to you, please subscribe to this channel.